Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And this is now question number eight, part C, from the International GCSE, IGCSE, Cambridge, May, June 2020, paper four, variant one from the 0580 syllabus. And um, question part A and B I answered in a separate video because that was about trigonometry and this is about a different topic. So in order for me to be able to save these under playlists according to topic, I decided to make a separate video for part C, which is about graphs of functions. So first of all, it says, write x squared plus 10x plus 14 in the form x plus a squared plus b. So what they're asking us to do here is to complete the square. So to complete the square um, is when you write something in this form here. Okay. <coughs> what we need to do is to rewrite this in a form that looks like that. All right. Now, one of the things that we should realize when we have um, square brackets, like, for example, if I say x plus, let's say x plus 4 squared. Okay. If you have something like this, when you, when you expand the bracket, it's x plus 4 times x plus 4, which gives you x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now, what you realize is when you square a bracket, the x term that you get when you square it is always double the number inside this bracket and there's going to be a number a constant term when you square it which is always the square of the number in the bracket okay so if we're doing the reverse if i'm going to put it from there into this form then what we should realize is something that looks like this will end up having a bracket which is squared you will have x and you'll have if there's a plus here you'll have a plus here and then whatever goes in this place is a half of this number without the x. As you can see, when you expand it, you can see that that's what happens. So if you're going the opposite way, this is going to be a half of that number without the x. So this is, in this case, is going to be a 5. All right? Now, if I expand this, I'm going to have x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now, if I expand this, I'm going to have x squared plus 10x, but then I have plus 25. Now, I don't have a plus 25 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first take away the 25 that I get when I expand this. Now this is exactly the same as that part here now. These are the same. This and this are exactly the same. If I was to expand um, this, I'll have <laughs> x squared plus 10x plus 25 minus 25. All right. So now that becomes x squared plus 10x. Then I've got a plus 14 at the end. So this gives me x squared, x plus 5 squared, x plus 5 squared, and minus 25 plus 14 is negative 11. So we have now completed the square for this expression. Okay, now <coughs> part two is kind of um, like using, um, applying what, we, what we've done here to the situation of sketching graphs. So it says, on the axes, sketch the graph of y equals x squared plus 10x plus 14, indicating the coordinates of the turning point. Now, we just worked out that when we complete the square, we get x plus 5 squared minus 11. All right, now, what the completed the square format of a quadratic expression gives us is basically what's called the vertex. Now, we know that this graph if we try to think about how a quadratic graph looks first of all you have y equals x squared plus 10x plus 14 so the first thing we can see that is that the coefficient of a of x squared sorry the coefficient of x squared which you call a is greater than zero okay because the, the form of a quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c so when the coefficient of x squared is positive then it has like a minimum a smiley face we say it has a minimum so it's going to have that type of shape. So that's one thing that we have to take note of. The second thing we have to take note of um, in this particular question is only telling us to sketch the graph indicating the coordinates of the turning point. It's not telling us to f find the places where it crosses the axes, which we normally would have to do. But <coughs> just for our purposes, we can see that it's going to definitely cross the y-axis at 14. That will kind of help us in our sketch. So we can say one thing we can say is the y-intercept is when x equals 0. When x equals 0, y is going to be 0 squared plus 10 times 0 plus 14. 
So the y-intercept is 0, 0,14. So I know it's going to cross the y-axis somewhere up here. And the other thing we can tell from this particular form, which is completing the square, y equals x minus 5 squared minus x plus 5 squared minus 11, sorry, is what's called the vertex. Okay. When it's written in this form, we can find its highest or lowest value. Okay. Now, in this case, it's going to have a lowest value. Now, what will give us the lowest value? Let me just rewrite it in this way. Minus 11 plus x plus 5 squared. Now, if you think about it in this, in this way here, that you're always going to be adding something to negative 11. Y will always be negative 11 plus something. You're never going to be taking away something from negative 11 because this is always going to be positive. X plus 5 squared will always be greater than or equal to 0 because whatever goes in here is going to be squared. So it's going to be minus 11 plus something always. So it's, it's going to go from minus, it's, it's like you're always adding something to minus 11. The lowest that this can ever be, the lowest that this whole thing can ever be, is when this bracket becomes 0. When this bracket becomes 0, you're adding nothing to minus 11. So otherwise you're always adding something to minus 11. Now you're going to be adding nothing to minus 11 when this bracket becomes 0. What's the value of x which make this bracket 0? Well, when x equals negative 5, this bracket becomes 0. And when x equals negative 5, this bracket comes 0 and you're left with negative 11. So that means the vertex is negative 5 and negative 11. That is the vertex. That is the lowest point this curve will ever reach. Okay, so we know that the, the vertex is going to be somewhere in this area here and the y-intercept is going to be somewhere in this area here. So if it's going to have this type of quadratic shape like this, so it must be such that it turns in this area here and cuts through the x-axis it must go it must be a smiley face has a minimum the minimum is below the x-axis when y when y is negative 11 and it's going to have a y-intercept at 14 so it's definitely going to turn somewhere here and go up and cut the y-axis there so what we have to do here is draw something that looks like, something like this it doesn't have to be accurate just try and make it look like a nice quadratic this is a bit too straight here okay um, you have to try and Draw a quadratic. I'm not going to mark any points until I finish. So this is going to be 14. You don't actually have to mark this because the question doesn't tell you to mark the intercepts. Well, I'm just doing it for our sake. And the vertex is going to be at this point here, which is negative 5 and negative 11. Okay, so that's minus 11 and that's negative 5. Of course, this is not to scale. And that is what they're looking for. They didn't say indicate the coordinates of the places where of the, the x and the y-intercepts. And so on. that didn't ask for those. Okay. So that's perfectly fine as your answer. Now, normally, when you're doing a sketch of a quadratic, they might ask you to find the place where it crosses the x-axis, the place where it crosses the y-axis. Here, they're just interested in the vertex. So I'm guessing that the marks for this question, which are three, one would be for the uh, the shape, where it uh, has a minimum. One would be for the vertex being in the correct place, which is in this area here, the fourth quadrant, the third quadrant, sorry, one, two, three, where you get minus 5, minus 11. So the fact that it turns in this place, um, and I guess for it to cross the y-axis over there, that's probably one of the marks in the mark scheme for it to be given that, you know, it has to come across uh, the x-axis twice on this side for it to be correct. So this would be the three marks for this question, I guess. Now, if you wanted to put more detail into here and find the x-intercepts, you could possibly do that as well. It's not a problem. In most questions, they do ask for the x-intercepts. Now, for us to do that, we have to find the place where the where y equals 0. So this is an addition to what you have to do, just in case, for you, for you just for your information, if you did have to find the x-intercepts, this is what you'd have to do. So just like the y-intercept is when x equals 0, the x-intercept is when y equals 0, because on the x-axis, y is 0. So if you... Uh, try to solve the equation x squared plus 10x plus 14 equals 0. Well, this doesn't factorize because the only numbers that give you 14 um, as a product are 14 and 1 and 2 and 7. And um, you can't factorize, though you can't write a product um, of 14 and um, 14 and 1 and um, 7 and 2, which gives you f 10 as a sum. They have to be multiplied to give you 14 and add to give you um, 10. So there's no way that we can find 
a uh, you know two factors here we can't factorize so then we could either use a formula or completing the square well as we have already completed the square for this expression this would be an easy way to do it I'll show you how to do both just in case but you have x plus 5 squared minus 11 equals 0 so what I'm doing now actually is in addition to what you're supposed to do for this question you don't really have to do this now okay you could stop at just drawing the vertex showing where the vertex is and that's it maybe putting the y step might be sensible uh, you don't actually have to do what I'm doing now I'm just doing that in do this in order to just give a bit more information and uh, you know just like some extra information for you so if a question does come up like this you would know what to do so now to solve this now we've completed the square we can say x plus 5 squared equals 11 now we can take the square root of both sides remember when you take the square root of both sides there's going to be a positive and negative solution so x equals minus 5 plus or minus root 11 so we can then write the decimal values if you want but basically this is going to be of course the lower value which is minus 5 minus root 11 and this is the higher value which is minus 5 plus root 11 and we can see that root 11 is going to be bigger than um, 3 but less than 4 because the square root of four, if 16 is 4 the square root of 3 is 9 this can be somewhere between 3 and 4 closer to 3 so this is definitely going to be a negative value this is definitely going to be a negative value minus 5 plus 3 point something is going to be negative and of course this is negative so we've we can it's kind of confirmed for us that we've done the right thing by making a cut two places on the on the negative side of the x-axis all right so that's one way of doing it and you can write this in decimal form minus 5 plus root 11 write the decimal value and so on okay um the other way of of finding these places where it cuts the um the x-axis is by using the quadratic formula okay and the quadratic formula x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a okay so here you have minus b so you're going to go back to this form minus b which is minus 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 100 b squared minus 4 times 1 times 14 all over 2 times 1 okay and when you work that out it should give us exactly the same answer so you have uh, minus 10 plus the square root of 100 minus 4 times 14 oops 4 times 14 all over 2 times 1 which is 2 so what I'm doing minus b minus b minus 11 minus 10 sorry minus 10 okay plus the 10 squared b squared minus 4 times a 1 times c 14 over 2 good and you see it gives us the same answer minus 5 plus root 11 plus root 11 and the other one would be if you change that here of course it would be minus root 11 change that to a minus and you're going to get minus 5 minus root 11 so you get the two solutions that we got before this is just using the formula this is using completing the square why did I use completing the square first because we already had to complete the square in the first part of the question that's fine although we don't actually have to do any of this in this question it only asks us to sketch the graph indicating the coordinates of the turning point so as long as you have the turning in the right area and you know I would say that you make it cross back through here in the negative side because it has to go to 14 that would be sufficient for you to get the marks for this none of this part needs to be done at all okay it's just extra bit of information for you in case you get a question where they tell you also to find the places where it crosses the x-axis okay so there's the answer to C part 1 and 2 and that concludes this question which is question number eight um, as I said this is an uh, eight part C this is in a separate play playlist than eight part A and B this is to do with graphs of functions so you will find the playlist for the paper that this is from in this um, area over here and you'll find the playlist for graphs of functions in this area over here I'll also include the uh, uh, link to the video which gives you part A and B of this question over here can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon